So now we're at the end of the fall of Europe, which is DICE's first major stint of the Tides of War for Battlefield 5. We're about to move on to the Pacific, which is the next largest stint. I thought now would be a good time to rank the maps that have released so far for Battlefield 5, the post-launch maps, from worst to best. Now, I know my ranking of these is not going to be the same as everybody else's, and that's okay. So once you've watched this video today, leave a comment down below and let me know what order you'd pick or if you disagree with certain uh, choices that I've made. Let me know down in the comments. It's okay to think differently to everyone else, but, you know, let's try and remain civil. This video today is sponsored by Elgato. If you need any equipment to help you record your video game moments or stream your content to Twitch or YouTube, these guys have got you covered. Click the link at the top of the description to learn more. Okay then, let's get started with the map that I think is the worst that has released so far. This is Provence. It's a repurposed 5v5 competitive map only available for the smaller game modes, so Squad Conquest and Team Deathmatch. Despite being a map that's really quite good for infantry combat, that is basically all it offers. Whilst other maps only offer infantry combat as well, at least they're large enough to support the other game modes that the majority of Battlefield players are actually looking for, the 64 player modes like Conquest and Breakthrough. The B flag location in Squad Conquest, that harbours the most action overall, with it being set lower down to the rest of the map, it kind of becomes an explosive hellhole for most of the round, but it also acts as a pushing point onto the other two flags as well. Despite this map being a bit of a letdown, it does basically use brand new assets, so it makes it feel like a very unique map. I've already said in previous videos that if DICE could do some work down the road on this map to expand it and make it into a larger conquest map that would support 64 players, then that would be awesome. It's a really cool setting and I'd like to see it expanded. A French countryside town, large open fields that stretch out onto capture points around farms. That's a setting that I'd love to play in Battlefield 5. One thing DICE would simply have to change, however, is the overly beige nature of the map. Everything is covered in this dirty yellow colour grading, and it makes the map look extremely bland and uninspiring. In seventh place, we have Lofoten Islands, which suffers a similar fate in my list to Provence. A map designed to support the now cancelled 5v5 competitive game mode, Lofoten Islands falls flat when it comes to its offering because it just doesn't feature the larger game modes available. The reason this map takes a place above Provence, however, is because the setting is one of those that sets the map up as one you remember. It's a set of islands on the coast of Norway, covered in different coloured houses, and it's a place where locals like to hang up their sharks outside their back door. The Team Deathmatch area is on a separate island to the Squad Conquest area, which does offer up some variety in combat overall, but unfortunately, the map just cannot compete with some of the others because it doesn't support the game modes that I want to play. In sixth place, we have Halvoy, the Firestorm Battle Royale map. Now, a lot of people forget about this map, or they don't classify it as a proper map because it's not supported in the standard multiplayer section of Battlefield 5, and that is exactly why it takes sixth place for me. I rather enjoyed Firestorm when it first launched, despite the fact that it was just a very classic take on the Battle Royale genre. Now, the map is absolutely huge, it's very highly detailed considering its size, and it's set in a location that again sets it apart from other maps in the game. It's this huge Norwegian peninsula, covered in different name locations and points of interest. Each match is ultimately going to play out very different to the last one. Now, an infamous quote within the Battlefield community from a developer is that Halvoy is 10 times the size of a normal multiplayer map, and therefore we should look at Halvoy as 10 multiplayer maps stitched together. Sadly, I don't see it that way at all, and because it's a map that sits outside the main multiplayer attraction that Battlefield is really known for, I don't rank it highly as a post-launch map. I think the last time I played on this map was back before the summer, so we're talking five or six months ago now. Fifth place on the list, that goes to Al Sandan, introduced only recently after a near three month delay due to graphical issues. The map takes on a mission from Battlefield 5 single player, slightly tweaks it, 
to make it suitable as a multiplayer map. Focusing gameplay more on vehicles than infantry, this map does give the tankers and pilots of Battlefield 5 a playground to have fun on, whilst infantry can still make a sizeable impact from the ground below. A German-held airfield gives them aerial superiority at the start of a round, but the British get a tank base flag to capture, so they pose more of a threat on the ground. Alson Dan brought back some of that all-out war feeling that's been missing from Battlefield 5 after its launch. Many of the maps focused heavily on infantry combat, and more vehicle-inclined players out there didn't really have much to go on. And it meant that Alson Dan's three-month delay was even harder to swallow for those players who wanted some vehicle combat. Now, the reason the map doesn't feature higher on my list is just because it's not a particularly memorable map. There's no unique feature to it that I'd say makes it stand out from the rest. It's more of a map that's been added to the game to fill a gap, rather than one that's been made from an idea or a vision that was conjured up by the development team. It's not a bad map by any means, it's just not a particularly memorable one. Fourth place on my list, and this might surprise you, goes to Panzerstorm. Of all of the larger maps in Battlefield 5 at the moment, this is the one that I don't mind playing, and it's arguably the biggest map of all of them. And there's actually a section of it that I really like to play on. Overall though, Panzerstorm is simply a large expanse of green fields that are interspersed with some buildings that make for the capture points. The central band of objectives that go right across the middle of the map, they host most of the fighting here and that's where the tanks and the infantry, they come clashing together. Flags change hands quite often here and influence from bombers in the sky, they can really help swing the battle one way or the other, but it's that C, D, E band of capture points that are close enough together for infantry to move between them without needing to hitch rides with vehicles. Infantry really are the key to capturing points on this map, despite it being overly focused on vehicle combat. Big heavy tanks, they might look imposing, but if there's only one or two soldiers inside, that's not a lot of weight for capturing points. Seven, eight, nine, ten, 20 infantry soldiers taking cover in buildings or behind fortifications, suddenly that flag is capturing in your favour. Now, Panzerstorm was the first post-launch map for Battlefield 5, and over time, it has grown on me to the point where now I do actually get excited when it appears in the rotation. That's why it's got fourth spot. Taking third spot on my list is Marita. Introduced much more recently than Panzerstorm, Marita is basically the polar opposite kind of map. It's a mountainous map set on the Greek-Albanian border, and it plays host to an infantry-only fighting location that takes vertical gameplay as the number one feature and just runs a mile with it. The central D and C flags on Conquest, they become massive choke points. You can throw grenades, you can spam dynamite, and you can prone with your MMGs for as long as there's tickets left in the round. Breakthrough is the grind of the century. It's an open air mosh pit of explosives. That's probably how best to describe it. Very few flanking routes makes it quite hard to get a shot on the enemy if they've defended properly. The reason that it's third on the list though, for me, the setting is one that is really, really beautiful. And the atmosphere here that DICE has created with the sound design is really top notch on Marita. I also like the fact that at the moment, it's the only map in the game outside of Firestorm's Halvoy map to feature tractors as usable vehicles. That gets it some bonus points. Second place, the runner up, that goes to Mercury. I'd say so far for Battlefield 5, this map represents the most balanced addition to the game when it comes to support for all different types of gameplay at the same time. Mercury supports air, ground vehicle and infantry combat on a map that's large enough to accommodate all of that. The central town location makes for a brilliant infantry battleground where tanks and armoured vehicles, they can muscle their way in for a piece of the action. The outer capture points, they're more suited to vehicle gameplay, but they are more than reachable for the infantry on the ground too. The elevated edges of the map make the town sit in a bowl, almost like a cauldron in the middle. And with most of the buildings being destructible, it makes for an incredibly frantic experience. Now on Breakthrough, the map starts on an airfield down the coast from the town, which creates another epic fighting location with the defenders. They're pushing across open ground through airplane hangars, and the defenders, 
they're using whatever cover they can find to just try and hold on to the point. Now the only improvement I'd make to this map is to include this little island here just off the coast and turn it into a capture point. The only way to really do this would be to add support for boats into Battlefield 5. You couldn't expect players to just swim across it all the time. People would get shot instantly. Right now in Battlefield 5, boats don't exist. They are coming with the Pacific update, however, so there's hope that things might change in the future. And then, finally, taking the number one spot here. Well, it's rather obvious. It's Operation Underground. A reimagining of the Metro Classic map from the days of Battlefield 3, the DICE team really outdid themselves with a map that not only provides the meat grinder gameplay that Battlefield players seem to desperately crave these days, but they also provided an actual improvement over the original design. They removed some annoyances. Extra flanking routes across both sides of the Metro Tunnel, they allow infantry to move through the area just a little bit more freely, and they can break up some of those solid blocks of defense by appearing down a route that perhaps the enemy wasn't expecting. Gameplay flows a lot more on Operation Underground than it ever did on Operation Metro. The service tunnels along one side of the Metro, they flood with water and then drain again during matches, meaning sometimes you have to swim through the tunnels and then break off to the side to come up for air. It's a really nice change of pace when that happens and it ensures that gameplay always remains enjoyable throughout the round, rather than falling stagnant and matches ending up largely the same each time you play the map. Also, the setting for it, a German city, offering some of the more fringe players a reason to come back and play a map set in a proper location that they might recognize from World War II. That is a pretty good move here from the DICE team. They took the essence of the original map, they slightly adapted the formula, and they fitted it into their current game. That's a proper reimagining. So, that's my ranking, but what about yours? Let me know what you think down below, drop your rankings in a comment, and then have a look at some of the others that are down there, and see what you think, if they're the same or they differ from other people. Thanks very much for watching today, make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, a dislike if you didn't, and until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.